Hello, and welcome to today's presentation on Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist. He was born in Copenhagen on October 7, 1885. His father was an eminent physiologist, and his mother was a wealthy Jew from a family who was distinguished in education. He was responsible for the Bohr model, the theory of complementarity, and he worked on the Manhattan Project. Now, Niels Bohr was a pretty neat guy, figured out a lot of stuff on which science relies. He and his brother went to soccer as kids, but you best be thankful that all he did. No. Now his father a physiologist, when so Niels became a physicist, a pretty famous scientist he was to become. He started out at Copenhagen, taught by Christian Christensen. His journey had begun, his time to shine had come. Path for Niels began to unravel to Manchester. He decided to travel. He began to build up a new foundation for a soon-to-be great scientific reputation. Then he met Ernest Rutherford, whose new ideas struck a chord. Niels was all aboard the atomic model he designed. Why didn't it implode? He asked. It seemed an impossible test, but in a flash, he would amass electron orbits were defined. The Bohr model is a simple way of representing the hydrogen atom. The theory suggests that electrons only travel along defined orbits and, therefore, now, Niels Bohr was a pretty neat guy, figured out a lot of stuff on which science relies. A model of the atom you discover and build, but his full potential was not yet fulfilled. At Copenhagen, he became their physics professor, and with his fresh scientific skills no lesser, he shocked the whole scientific community with his new ideas at every opportunity. A new institute he founded, and it was soon about it with new ideas that astounded and shocked the physics land. While to nobody's surprise, the 22 Nobel Prize was before in Neil's eyes his ideas in demand. Niels Bohr was a pretty neat guy, figured out a lot of stuff on which science relies. With a Nobel in hand, he was second to none, but this physics giant was not yet done. He now came up with complementarity, which stated that things were fine and contradictory, like light being both a particle and a wave, but Einstein didn't like how that would behave. Or like probability, which caused hostility, and Einstein disliked the possibility, which led to much debates. So however, despite the constant physics fight, the two were all right, so pretty fine mates. Way to America, for now moved to help with the project of which he disapproved. Down in New Mexico, the bombs from Manhattan were developed for the purpose of Japan to flatten. Bohr wanted peace, the bombs to cease, the hate to decrease, but he went unheard. As soon as war was done, he was back to Copenhagen. Yeah, Bohr had had his fun. The new age of physics bird. Niels Bohr was a pretty neat guy. Figured out a lot of stuff on which science relies. He and his brother went to soccer as kids, but, but you, you best, best be thankful, thankful that it all he did. did. But you best be thankful that it all he did. Maybe I should further explain that one. At a very young age, my brother was a very promising soccer player. He would later go on to play for the Danish national soccer team. I, on the other hand, started in our home country of Denmark, at the University of Copenhagen. Here I would learn under Christian Christensen. This, along with my strong family history and science, would provide a sturdy foundation for my later career. After I graduated with my doctorate, I teamed up with fellow physicist Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford stated that electrons were randomly moving around the nucleus, but I was able to decide that the electrons were not randomly moving around, but traveling on very definite paths around the nucleus, as you can see by my model. Therefore, the electron would not hit the nucleus, as classical science had stated. I derived this equation. With this discovery, I went back to my beloved alma mater, and further studied the shell of an atom, which would lead to the breakthrough discoveries. One discovery showed that I redefined quantum mechanics that Planck had stated. I then had to describe the connection between what a contemporary of mine was citing and what I had stated. He said that the electron was just a, an elongated wave that was traveling around the nucleus, but I had stated that it was a particle. 
I came up with my theory of complementarity. This stated that the certain co objects would be contradictory when viewed at two opposite viewpoints. This meant that light could be both a particle and a wave, as our theories combined as one idea. This idea led to many debates on whether or not quantum numbers were actually real. But in the end, I was right, because I'm me. Einstein was the one who challenged this. He said that infinite numbers were much more likely than one quantum number. After a series of debates with Einstein about this quantum theory, I was forced to move from my home by Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler occupied Denmark and I was half Jewish. For my own safety, I moved to Sweden and from there to the UK. In the UK, they asked for my help in their atomic bomb. I helped as much as I could and when the Manhattan Project got word of me, I moved to the US to help there too. I used my knowledge to further the study of the atomic bomb. But while I was working on this project, I asked FDR and Winston Churchill to please not develop this bomb. I had decided that it was not moral for man to have such power. I moved to New Mexico though, and I helped derive certain equations that helped forward the progress of the atomic bomb. When the war finally ended, I went back to Copenhagen to continue my research and teach at the University of Copenhagen. I had six sons with my wife, one of whom would later go on to win the Nobel Prize himself.